This is Mac OS Ken. Never mind about the car, maybe. Apple sweetens the deal for DTK returns, and Snoopy takes over Apple's homepage. It is Monday, the 8th of February, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Amazon Pharmacy. Your medication made easy. Learn more at Amazon.com slash RX. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon.com slash macOSCan. We begin the day with an illustration highlighting the folly of falling fully for the rumor du jour. Last week, we heard that Apple was inches away from signing a deal with Hyundai to build Apple's car at a Kia factory in West Point, Georgia. And golly, did guys and gals in the Apple-watching world go gaga, especially once it became clear that Apple would reportedly invest $3.6 billion in the Kia factory in question to get things up and running. And never mind the report from earlier in the week that had the unnamed Hyundai exec saying they weren't sure they wanted to build a car for Apple, and leave off the Nikkei report that had Japanese companies and what would likely be Apple's automotive supply chain saying there's no telling where the car is going to be made. Call the folks in Stone Mountain, Apple is headed to town. Uh, well, near town. And also, never mind. On Friday, Bloomberg ran a piece saying that talks between Apple and Hyundai about the car had stalled. The piece said it's not clear if or when the discussions might resume. It seems clear now, though, they will not resume. Unless they do. Sunday evening, Apple Insider ran a report highlighting another piece from Bloomberg that had Hyundai saying point blank that talks around building a car for Apple are done. Except I didn't see where they said that point blank. The Bloomberg headline read, Hyundai Kia say not in car development talks with Apple. But the Bloomberg article doesn't have that as a quote. Here are the first two paragraphs of the Bloomberg piece. Hyundai and its affiliate Kia said that they aren't in discussions with Apple on cooperating to develop a self-driving electric vehicle following reports and speculation that they were working with the tech giant. The South Korean car makers have been talking with multiple companies about autonomous electric car development, but no decision has been made, they said, in regulatory filings Monday. Hyundai said the discussions are in early stages. Hyundai's shares fell as much as 8.4% in Seoul, while Kia slumped 15.3%. But here's the thing. Bloomberg itself says Hyundai's statement is almost identical to one it issued a month ago. That's referring to the statement where Hyundai said it was in talks with lots of companies, apparently trying to backpedal from statements from execs saying explicitly that they were in talks with Apple. So Apple and Hyundai aren't building a car. Unless they are. But they're probably not. Unless they are. More in 10 minutes. Apple has upped its offer to developers with DTKs it wants back. You may remember the story from last week, the one that had Apple asking for its M1 Mac Mini developer transition kits back earlier than expected. When they went out in June, developers were supposed to have a year with the machines. Asking for them back last week shortened that window by quite a bit. To sort of make it up to them, Apple was offering a $200 credit that devs could put towards an M1 Mac of their own. Felt kind of chintzy to some, though, since developers had paid $500 for access to the kits. Now Apple is offering a $500 credit instead. A piece from Mac Rumors had the Cupertino company upping the offer last Friday. Quoting that email... Instead of the $200 credit that expires in May, we are giving you a $500 Apple credit and extending the time you can use it to get a new M1 Mac through the end of the year. If you already purchased a new M1 Mac, the Apple credit gives you the flexibility to purchase any Apple product to help with your app development work. Because that is why you wanted it, right? 
The $500 credit is the carrot. While there is no stick exactly, the piece does point out that the DTKs have received their last publicly available software updates, with none on the way after Big Sur 11.2. Details on returning the DTKs will be out to developers soon. Apple encourages devs to get off those machines and onto new ones so their work can continue unabated. Here's kind of a disheartening story. Apple's apparently making things tougher for third-party device and accessory makers who sell through Apple's retail channels, both physical stores and online. Apple Insider highlights a report from The Telegraph out of the UK that says the company is shifting the way it pays and what it pays for. According to the report, the changes include a change in how long a supplier waits for payment, increasing the time from 45 days to 60. Suppliers also have to accept a consignment model and that they are paid only once an item is sold. Additionally, the piece has suppliers saying that they are now dealing with Apple directly. Previously, deals were negotiated with distribution companies. Unnamed suppliers say Apple's giving them take-it-or-leave-it terms, offering no room for negotiation. There may be a silver lining in that cloud, though. According to the report, the non-negotiable nature of the changes does at least mean all suppliers have the same deal with Apple, but the dependence on sales via Apple also means most are likely to accept them. News of a couple of lawsuits, one settled, another on the rise... On the bygones, Mac Rumors ran a piece last week saying that Korea's Fair Trade Commission, or FTC, has accepted an Apple settlement proposal tied to iPhone sales. According to the piece, Apple has been under investigation in Korea since 2016 over unfair iPhone contracts that required local carriers to pay advertising and repair costs, with the Korean Fair Trade Commission conducting raids in June of 2016 and November 2017. The country had considered financial penalties against Apple. However, under South Korean law, the piece says companies accused of anti-competitive behavior can suggest their own remedies. Apple Korea proposed spending 100 billion won, just under 90 million dollars U.S., on a few initiatives, including 40 billion won on an R&D center for local small-sized businesses involved in smartphone manufacturing, 25 billion converted into 10% off on iPhone repairs and warranties for consumers, 25 billion towards an education center for training information and communications technology workers, and 10 billion toward digital education in schools and public facilities. The Korean FTC has accepted the proposal, work on which will be checked every six months for the next three years by an accounting firm chosen by the FTC. Announcing the resolution, an Apple spokesperson said, We are pleased this process has reached a conclusion and look forward to expanding and accelerating our existing commitments here with these new investments that will benefit local suppliers and manufacturers, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and education. The broad range of initiatives will strengthen innovation and economic opportunity across Korea. We look forward to sharing more details on these plans in the months to come. The other Apple suit is a bit more business as usual. Apple Insider says the Cupertino company is being sued for patent infringement over Face ID and other camera features. While the plaintiff in the case isn't producing hardware on their own, it's not the usual patent troll stuff. The suing entity, Gesture Technology Partners LLC, was founded a few years ago by Dr. Timothy Pryor. Not only is he the only inventor listed on the five patents in question, he's done business with Apple before. Quoting Apple Insider, Apple has purchased patents and technologies from Dr. Pryor in the past, including his multi-touch patent portfolio in 2010, the suit reads. Dr. Pryor later assisted Apple in asserting the multi-touch portfolio against HTC. The complaint claims that Dr. Pryor approached Apple about licensing rights to the camera-based patents. It goes on to state that Apple sent correspondence back to Dr. Pryor but failed to take any steps to avoid infringement. As a result, Pryor and company have called for a jury trial. They're seeking damages, with interest, 
costs incurred because of the alleged infringement, and legal fees. More news in a moment, but first a word from Amazon Pharmacy. Your medication made easy. I got some really cool coffee canisters as a gift for Christmas, because I like to keep different kinds of coffee in the house. What I didn't get were coffee scoops. Tired of opening two canisters to scoop one kind of coffee? I turned to Amazon for new scoops. As a Prime member, they had them to my house within 48 hours, and of course, delivery was free. What does that have to do with Amazon Pharmacy? Well, it illustrates the speed and convenience with which they work. The stuff you like about shopping with Amazon works with your prescriptions with Amazon Pharmacy, like clear pricing and quick delivery. But it's got a lot of the good stuff about going to the pharmacy as well, like being fully HIPAA compliant and having a pharmacist you can get in touch with 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And Amazon Pharmacy works with most insurance plans nationwide. Just have your doctor's office send your next prescription straight to Amazon Pharmacy and your meds turn up at your door. If you're still going to the pharmacy to pick up your meds, have them come to you instead. Amazon Prime members can save on prescription medication when not using insurance and get free two-day delivery. Learn more at Amazon.com slash macOSCan. Rx. That's Amazon.com slash macOSCan Rx. Amazon.com slash macOSCan Rx. There's sort of a non story story out of Bloomberg that was making the rounds last week. It had Google exploring an alternative to app tracking transparency the thing that'll let iOS users opt out of having their activity tracked from app to app to app. Call me crazy, but that's kind of a binary proposition, isn't it? If you're not letting people opt out of being tracked, and Bloomberg says that won't be an Android option, if you're not letting people opt out of being tracked, you're letting them be tracked, right? And yet... Secret so-and-sos tell Bloomberg that the search giant is discussing how it can limit data collection and cross-app tracking on the Android operating system in a way that is less stringent than Apple's solution. The piece goes on to say Google is trying to balance the rising demands of privacy-conscious consumers with the financial needs of developers and advertisers. Not unlike Facebook and its whole looking out for the small business guy stance, Google is among the developers and advertisers whose financial needs would figure into that mix. While iOS will eventually have a point-blank ask app not to track option, Bloomberg says a Google solution is likely to be less strict and won't require a prompt to opt in to data tracking like Apple's, the people said. The exploration into an Android alternative to Apple's feature is still in the early stages, and Google hasn't decided when or if, it will go ahead with the changes. But I guess they get points for maybe thinking about ways to maybe make tracking users somewhat less invasive. Or something. The Snoopy Show premiered on Apple TV Plus on Friday, and Apple's landing page went to the dogs to promote it. Well, went to the dog, really. And his little bird friend and some of his bird friends' bird friends. iMore highlighted what Apple done for the homepage. Basically, Snoopy and Woodstock were all over it. The top of the page featured an ad for the show. Further down the page is Snoopy, decked as a World War I flying ace, except instead of flying atop his doghouse, he's flying atop a product red iPhone 12. To illustrate how light the iPad Air is, the piece has one being carried by Woodstock and a few similarly feathered friends. Scroll down a bit more and we find Snoopy and Woodstock dancing next to a HomePod Mini. And finally, the space for Apple TV. There's a regular Apple TV image, except there is, or was, an image for the Snoopy show on the screen. Oh, and there's a promo for Apple TV Plus at the bottom of the page, featuring the whole Peanuts gang. 
Sorry for switching back and forth between the past and present tense. It was the weekend when I wrote the story. It's a new week as you hear this. I would imagine the promo images are gone, but I don't know. It's not now yet. You can check for yourself at apple.com. From hot newness to what's bound to be a sentimental favorite for some, the Mac Observer says the holiday special Be My Valentine Charlie Brown has turned up on Apple TV+. It joins more well-known holiday classics. It's The Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, A Charlie Brown Christmas, and Happy New Year, Charlie Brown. And finally today, nominations for this year's NAACP Image Awards are out, and Apple has been nominated 11 times over. The Los Angeles Times says the Image Awards celebrate the work of artists of color and those advocating for social justice through art. Apple Insider has news of the Apple nominations, which include the Oprah Conversation for Outstanding Talk Series, Central Park for Outstanding Animated Series, Verses for Outstanding Variety Show, The Banker picks up four nominations, including for Outstanding Independent Motion Picture and Outstanding Ensemble Cast in a Motion Picture, and a couple of acting nominations, Nia Long for Outstanding Supporting Actress, and Anthony Mackie for Outstanding Actor. The anthology series Little America got three nominations, two for writing on the episodes The Rock and The Manager, and one for directing on the episode The Jaguar. And the series Little Voice picked up a writing nomination for the episode Love Hurts. Winners will be announced on Saturday, the 27th of March. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Amazon Pharmacy. Your medication made easy. Learn more at Amazon.com slash macOS Ken RX. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon.com slash macOS Ken. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at BackbeatMedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.